nice waist, look sweet. Can I have a taste? I know that you'll I know that you'll take you out on the day. Out to eat, 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 eat you out. Penny pennies is my plate. She yeah, she would she would shoot like a fire hydrant. She was a hypersexual. Yeah, I ain't lying. I ain't judging shit. <laughs> I ain't Simon, but I move like Phelps in this water I'm in. I got my swimming cap already, took my after dinner nap. About to make a movie scene. Tripod, whipped cream, iPod, playing Rick Ross 16. Candles burning, we smoking channel surfing till our hands start working. About to give the window a show, like denim curtains. I told the stand, start twerking, act like I'm just a random man you flirt with. I like how you bend it over and your stance is perfect. Now back it up for me slow. Please don't hurt it. Yeah, sensitive. I see it's dripping. Let, let me into it. Let me bird box through your leg. Blindfold you. I told you it's gonna be better than great. She got that long hair, pretty fat, fat ass, nice waist, look sweet. Can I have a taste? I know that you'll be a great Take it out on a date, out to eat, yeah, eat, eat you out. Pen, pennies is my place. She got that short hair, pretty fat, fat ass, nice waist, look sweet. Sweet. Can I have a taste? I know that you're here. Yeah. Free to eat out, out the eat, yeah. Eat, eat you out, out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my plate, yeah. Uh, head cut like Haley Berry, gorgeous. Uh, gorgeous. Always topless, yeah. on my sword fist. Uh, Cold uh, meat, 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 uh
I just started my own real estate firm here in New York City. Mm, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, so woman owned, black owned. Yeah. I just took the leap. Yeah, the McNeil Group. <laughs> 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 her coach and everything um in addition to that i am a founder of the real estate charm school which helps agents figure out and maneuver how to sell real estate in new york i'm a mom i'm I'm not a mom yet but i'm speaking to fruition i'm a friend i'm I'm a sister and um yeah right now i'm just trying to figure out how do i get this business up and running it's way harder than i thought it was but Mm -hmm. i'm here for the ride and i can't wait excellent so yes Yes. Yes. (laughs) That's massive. Thank you. Thank you. Good. First up, I just want to shout out Jersey. Jersey. Jersey is. This first Jersey. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from from Newark. That was a Brooklyn (laughs) check. He said New York. Right. You have to say Newark. You said Newark. Newark. But I'm licensed in New York and Jersey. So much much love for Jersey. That was such a (laughs) professional Brooklyn check. First of all. transformational work facilitator. Um, I've, um, I think, um, world traveler, brother, friend, lover, good, all around good guy, I hope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta throw the hope in there. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, thank you very much. Um, again, our guests had no idea why they were up here. <laughs> like they knew, so, and I'm saying that to say it's not like you guys are walking around like, yeah, I'm black excellence, you know, and that's why I'm on this show. And Nasi and I did that for a reason. So the first question. Well, I do want to You know, I do. Well, then there it is. So, like, the first question we have is, what is black excellence to you? Is it something that you even think of? Or are you aware of it? Do you see yourself as exemplifying? And as you guys answer the question, just, um, you know, even though you are speaking on black excellence, we don't think that you represent every single black person. You're really just speaking on your own behalf. So, oh, thank you. <coughs> well, mm. I, I think black excellence is 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 just um, living in your authentic self. I think for, um, for and I think we're in the age where we really can <laughs> out of because um, black people had for so many years had to not. Um, themselves they had to mm-hmm. they had to front they had to fake they mm-hmm. had to figure themselves out just to, just to be accepted where I think right now we're in a, we're in a, a position where we don't we don't have to do that as much mm-hmm. and um, I, I was thinking about um, I used to be frustrated when I heard oh this is the first black so-and-so and it's a lot happening this I think yeah. in the, in the recent years it's the first black this first black this and I was like yeah, yeah. why do I get frustrated by that right it was and it's not because they they aren't doing great yeah. Is that we were there was a time where the opportunity wasn't there, and so celebrating now the time that there that, that we're in a time where it is there, where it won't be the first black, and it will just be is yeah. right? right. And so that's what for me, black excellence is me being my authentic self, me living my life true, and 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 living my life as a way of contribution to other people. So not just me being me in the world, but mm-hmm. like me looking to also impact and inspire other people. Yeah, because there's a lot of people just being them. Yeah, people are just being them, <laughs> which, is, which is excellent for them because right, they, okay, cause it's an right, opportunity, because yeah. they don't, you, you have no idea who you who you're inspiring yeah. just by being yourself. And so it gives them, hey, be you, but, <laughs> um, but I think excellence is, is, is more or less like I get to walk and talk and be who I am. I think for me, black excellence is about standing in our power. For so long, you know, I I feel that a lot of my peers and people I've been around, we haven't been taking Mm risks. It's like, I would do that, but I would try that, but just do it. Just do it. You know, uh, and and I understand for people who do have families and they can't take as many risks, but give yourself that shot bet on you right so if you're working at nine to six then from seven to midnight it's all you um so black excellence for me is just really standing in your power when i look at pictures of 
black people back in the days, how we were suited and booted and confident and took risk and we just did it. And now we just have fun. Mm -hmm. We need to get a little more serious. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what it is for me really. So Okay. That's that's those are great answers. Mm -hmm. Nessie asked me that personally and um I see, I, I love the way you guys opened it up because that kind of leads into a, this, the next question, which I will pose about the uh, stereotypes of, you know. Um, so, but for me, black excellence was a, akin to what you were saying. After you're hearing so much negative about you and seeing it and so forth, um, there's a lot of people that don't know that they're black doctors and dentists. That sounds crazy, right? But, <laughs> like... <laughs> <clears throat> if we're saying that uh, a percent or two percent, whatever the, the number is, a small percentage of therapists are black, right? How, there's a lot of people who would be like, yo, there's no black therapists. So to see people in their self, whatever that be, be a therapist or baller or whatever, or real estate or a corner store owner or sanitation worker, or like we saw yesterday, hairstylist, we're going to have a guest up here who's doing crazy things but it's excellence it's it's showing that we're, we're doing it just as everyone else you know um now when we come up to the, the question of what black excellence looks like uh neither one of you kind of mentioned like this classism have you experienced that do you are you aware of black excellence in a classist way within black people and black excellence, mind you, is not like a brand new thing, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. But, I, but yes. I, like, if you um, think about class, so like, if I'm growing up, I, I'll date myself. Like, the class was like the Hustables, right? Mm -hmm. yes. That was a, that yeah, was we the picture was the black, of the high. yeah, that was black <laughs> excellence, right? That's in the dictionary. Yeah, 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 right, that's, that's like <laughs> the, the face right next to it. Um, yes, that, that I think that still exists to a, to an extent. However. At the at the at that time, we were looking to prove ourselves. Mm. I think that's I think that we were looking to prove like, hey, we can be. Now mm. now you know. <laughs> now we get shows like Insecure. <laughs> we get shows like Atlanta. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, <laughs> can we just right. have fun? Right. Can we just be regular people? Yeah. Which I think is beautiful to see. I, I, I like growing up. I would never thought that I would ha have a show that there would be a show like Insecure where I can see me and my friends. Just being me and my friends. Correct. Rather than me having to, the sort of pressure to be something. This like ideal, this stereo, ideal yeah. stereotypical black excellence. And I, I appreciate what, what that generation needed to do because we had to see that as well to make sure that, to make sure that um, I can see that that's possible for me. Yeah. But, um, but we're living in, we live, right, right now we live in post Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Post Obama. Post Obama, so it's possible. We're living in a different time, but mm -hmm. do you still see that maybe if you're going to an interview or even in your, in a setting, a certain setting that may be more business oriented, if you show up in jeans and a cool shirt, it's fit, it looks good. If somebody shows up in a full blown suit, there is a level of okay. Yeah, I think it depends on the the. The job you go, I, and, I, I, and I may be unpopular in my So say not a right. job, say an event. Yeah. You're going to an event, and people are dressed up, yeah. you know, and, and everybody's just hanging out. But the guy with the suit might be looked at one way versus the guy that is tailored but has on jeans and a T-shirt. Possible, depending on the, I hear you. And so, yeah. I'm, well, so are we well, saying like excellence can, black excellence now, because I'm listening to this, yeah. is it also what it looks like? You know, is it is it suits, is it... You know, if you're in this scenario, I think to a greater population, it is what it looks to like. To a greater yeah. population, not amongst. Because even, <laughs> <population, laughs> even if this I'm choosing what it looks you like. guys for yeah. this episode, right? Um, you know, personally, like we're like, okay, what can we say black excellence looks like, right? And for then someone not to be like, oh, that's not excellence, right? Like, no, these people are, you know, in our, my point of view, our point of view, excellent, right? Um, but there is a stereotype associated with that. And it's not just in the black culture. Yes. It's, in every culture, it's right? My dad has 500 suits. He's never owned a pair of jeans in his life because that's how he had to go about in this world, in this country. Um, what are some stereotypes and stigmas? I know we kind of just started talking about that. Um, the Huxtable look. Um, what are some other stereotypes and stigmas around what black excellence looks like and what it could be? 
like as you've been saying there's new possibilities now of what we you know what people can be or strive to be that they didn't have the option to be in previous Before. decades yeah oh it's a tough one um some stereotypes that i'm seeing mm -hmm. especially in my industry i will go there first in the mm -hmm. real estate realm and then even with myself if I can keep it real on this radio yes. show. Please keep um, it real. <laughs> I choose, as much as I want to, sometimes wear my hair a certain way. I choose certain routes depending on a showing I may go on. I was coming from Egypt once, and I had my nice braids. And I was so insecure about going out to get a listing because I felt like, this couple would see me in a certain way. They were of a different descent. They would see me differently. And it was all in my head. It's stereotyped sometimes with ourselves. I got the listing. Yeah. They didn't care. They probably with, with lost the, my braids. With the braids. <laughs> the braids got it. So, She's like, oh, this is a down system. Right. <laughs> the stereotypes are sometimes in my head like, oh, I have to have my hair a certain way to look like excellence. I have to dress a certain way. I have to always wear a blazer to look like excellence. I have to walk in with confidence. Mm -hmm. Look, look, be, be. But... Really, sometimes I think we are creating those stereotypes more yes. so than people outside of us. So, cause like, for, so my background, I'm an artist, right? I, yeah. did, I wrote, I, um, I rap, I sing, <laughs> I do photography, like that's my, but to go in a, in a space where I'm like facilitating a workshop, I can't, Right. <laughs> it's too, it's, and so I have to, like you said, play up to a particular vibe mm -hmm. because if I, if I go in there, and I can, but if I go in there, <laughs> You know, <laughs> ready, to, ready to offer some swag. <laughs> it might not, it might not go right in certain circles. So, so I don't know if that's excellence or code switching, mm. right? I don't know if I'm looking to meet my audience, right. or I'm looking, to, or, I, or I'm playing myself down. Right. Is this unique to just the black population, or do you think this is something that? Everybody kind I of I think does. what's unique to the black population mm -hmm. is um, how often we have to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 inbred in how we grow up. <laughs> Fix your face, <laughs> like <laughs> right. We can't. We we, we we have to look a certain way, be a certain way to not show anything um, out of the ordinary. What well, I, I think other people or other races get a chance to actually fall apart. And be themselves. And be themselves. I don't think um, we allow, maybe things are changing, I don't have kids, but um, maybe we are allowing kids now to sort of fall apart. Cause I know that, what I've noticed recently is that there are more people who are interested in therapy than there have ever been. Ever. Ever, mm -hmm. as people of color. So there's, there's a conversation around, I get to, be, I get to fall apart mm -hmm. and be supported rather than you just you gotta keep you gotta keep this you gotta keep your face because you're you're representing all of us. You guys really went into the second part. You know, black excellence we throw that word around, but the second part of the episode is in inclusivity. So what I just heard from you both was how that looks being inclusive. You know, um, or there's a level of black excellence that you might look like even with the braids and to to another version of black people. Right, they see you even just dressing a certain way. That's what I meant. Uh, or you have posture, or you speak right. Like, speak right. <laughs> you see, you see. There we go. <laughs> that's my that's my cold switch. <laughs> and now. <laughs> so um, um, but that that's what I got from that. I'm really interested in um going in the idea of stereotypes, I have this article up from Essence, and the, the article is called, Is Black Excellence Killing Us? And I'm gonna read this paragraph mm. very quick. Okay. Um, and it was, it's talking about, it's coming from the idea of the talented 10th. Like again, this is the black excellence is not anything new, trendy that we just started. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois was talking about it, and that's a conversation in itself, right? Of like, has that carried along? So. And what they're saying, they're saying today, black excellence has mutated into something horrifying, ill-defined de Ill exceptions, expectations of grandeur, 
We attribute black excellence largely by the situational outcomes of black life and black experience. It's not a participation trophy, but it also isn't a first in show ribbon. It's an epithet <laughs> or a title that requires a communal agreement more so than any amount of school. And then in hearing that of like, that it's mutated into like something harm, harm like, is it a first place ribbon? Is it a, a something in the sense of like, I know how we're defining it. You know, you guys define it very uh, communal, like loving, like, yeah, everybody's black excellent. You do your thing. But in a whole, do you, have you seen it? Again, this is perspective. I'm not trying to throw anything on you. Somebody wrote this article up, so apparently people seen it some kind of way. But. Here's, here's what I would say about that. I think it's um, black excellence um, creates a, um, a perception, right? And I think when you're talking about perception, there's an opportunity for there it to be backed by false, <laughs> like, like you're not being real. Mm -hmm. And I think what's, and I think if, if, if that's what you look, you're looking to achieve something, to be, to be seen as something, then yes, I think that's mm -hmm. detrimental. Mm -hmm. Because you're not, you're not looking for the true who you are inside of all of it. Right. You're just looking at, okay, so what does black X look like? Okay, so I gotta wear, this, I gotta mm. have this car, mm. I gotta have this house, right. I, I gotta um, have my wife, mm -hmm. I gotta, or my husband, right. um, and we, it, and we, we gotta have kids, we gotta have was just saying, that's not exclusive to black people at all, right? No. Okay. There's all kinds of races that feel mm. that, right? Yeah. And then the pressure I put on myself to achieve this when I don't really want it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, hey, how but about I don't really that? want it. Yeah. But, but I got to do that in order to per be perceived as. Did that hit home for people when they see this? Like, <laughs> damn, you like, want all of this shit and don't even I'm, want it. I've been there. I've been there. But then I, I, I just had to sort of sit back and see what the fuck <laughs> do I want. <laughs> this might not be it. Right. I felt like this was a, a black excellence. Look, you can see us, we're heard, we're here, hashtag black excellence, right? Yeah. So now people are seeing us, they're hearing us, they're paying attention to us, we're getting noticed. And people are taking that and, and running with it for something else, but I don't think it's a mutation uh, situation mm -hmm. at all. I don't think um, yeah, it should be seen in, in, that, in that light. Yeah. But So what I heard in that um, article, maybe a little bit, or my perspective on it is that sometimes be any form of excellence there's a certain only certain people can be that level of excellence no matter what they do right mm -hmm. so there's privilege even in societies where there's a lack of privilege right so um what does excellence look like in any roles of leadership or you know success right so being tall is one of them being light skinned can be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> Yo, we really all gonna do the, the height perspective. Okay. We, we like that's our inner joke from since the oh. beginning of this. Oh, we gonna do the height joke. Yeah. It's a real conversation. It's, it is a it real is conversation. Real conversation. <laughs> I don't know what's going on on top. Anyway, that's yeah. a side conversation. <laughs> um. Yeah. So like, that's what I'm hearing is like that. There's kind of like a backlash against what it looks like to be excellent and if so everyone can get there or not get there. Do you think that's a part of the conversation? That some people feel like just naturally because of who they are, they can't achieve black excellence? Well, yeah, and then the depression sets in because you, you, you're trying to, but that's, I think, mm. I, yeah. think I think it's all societies, but then yeah. you, you try to achieve this goal and you hear professionals, people and celebrities, you hear everyone say, well, I wish I'd, I'm glad I'm here, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I wish I would have done it a different way. Yeah. I wish I would have been me first and then figured out everything else. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I think to show examples of what excellence um, is has a place in society, do I think um, is that all that we should show? No, I think. Yeah. I think it should be, all, as we are, we call ourselves the diaspora, I think the diaspora should be shown. 
and should be celebrated in all of it. There's different definitions of excellence and how you get there. And where people start to get depressed and start to get down is when they c- try to compare themselves to someone else who has reached the excellence. Yeah. So yeah. then... I'm trying to reach excellence. I'm comparing myself to someone else who's already reached it in my eyes. I don't think I can get there. So now I shut down. I stay in my bubble, and I don't even understand how great I can be. Right, That's right. it. And then, right? <laughs> come on. Boom, boom, boom. Right? And you don't know their story. Correct. You don't know how they got there. Yeah. Right. And, and from what work I've been, like I work with people on a, on a like intimate level, everyone has their own story. And so I always say you can't, no one else living my life better than I'm living it. That's right. <laughs> because you can't, you, you can't, you can't, um, ha- you, don't, you don't know how I got here. <laughs> so don't compare yourself to me. Right. I don't know how you got th- I can be inspired by you and say, okay, so you did your own business? Mm-hmm. All right, okay, let me do mine. Yeah. And do my way. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Who are some examples of black excellence to you that might not fit the stereotypical mold? Who are some people that you guys look up to, whether it's, you know, on, you know them on a personal level or they're a public figure? <laughs> a lot of mine are entertainers. Beyonce, because of her fierceness as a woman in her industry, in her sector. Diddy. Right? Like, I'm not taking no for an answer. Growing up on Bad Boy, I'm like, yup, that's me. <laughs> um, in the corporate world and other sectors, not too much. But I would say growing up, it was a lot of people in the entertainment world. Like, they came from where I came from. Mm-hmm. And like, again, comparing. They made it out. Doing that, I can make it too. I know there's more for me. Mm-hmm. So I only was able to see things you know, on TV. And I also had one mentor, I will say. When I was in um college my first couple of years in college i had a mentor and then i was able to kind of pick up things from her so yeah mm-hmm. um for me who, who represents um at black excellence i think is uh, my grandmother um i talk about her often because she 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 raised me <laughs> my grandmother raised me i was one of them lucky kids mm-hmm. um and her her own story being a migrant from the south to the, to the north, um, being raising eight kids, mm-hmm. being in, a, in an abusive relationship, leaving it, still having her kids, all of them be successful. Um, then when you think she had enough, she comes and picks me up. <laughs> and have some more. <laughs> and, 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 right, and raise me to adulthood. And I think there's there's a an excellence about her in um, choosing to be to be loving and to be caring and to be giving, mm-hmm. even and she's she's I've learned so much from her, um, and until the, until this day where she was still like t- I was I, I was at her house today right and she's like well Brad I got a gift for you I got some money for you I'm like you give wow. like okay <laughs> <laughs> right because she still thinks about how can she not not just me but all her kids she still thinks about how can she help her kids now wow. she, she is, she's tough <laughs> but she's still like thinking about how can I still be a support for other people and I think that's like excellent to me right amazing yeah. Yeah. Nice. See, I love that that's all I can say yeah. <laughs> I usually don't say much yeah yeah you got a prom amazing that's it that <laughs> <laughs> you know and that's um Again, that's why we didn't want to prompt you or talk about or have you thinking about what black excellence was because uh, that's that's a very real answer. We're seeing these people in our lives, uh, mentors, grandmothers. Mm-hmm. I feel like my mom, the, the people who raised me, these, uh, uh, I think about coaches. I was in Pop Warner football, man. That mm-hmm. saved a lot of kids. And a lot of us didn't have dads. And you had these guys out here donating time coaching kids. Shout out to the rifles. Uh, <laughs> from my side of Queens, it saved like thousands of little kids, you know. Um, and that was black excellence. However, I also know that when you mentioned Diddy's and these other people and levels of entertainment, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and we're going to move into some other questions mm-hmm. from this, but uh, that there is elitism, you know, and there are, let's just say from industry, there are 
door, closed doors. There's levels you can't get to. There's ladders. There's, I imagine in your industry, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna put anything on the spot, but we're in some very uh, unique industries, life coaching. Um, when you get into those niche uh, corners of industry, there's less and less of us. And you start seeing people who seem <laughs> a little distant from them. And they, they look good, they got the parts, they got the condo, they got the cars, and there's like a total disconnect yeah, with, the, uh, with the rest. So as, a, as I'm summing all this up of like this two different spectrum. What do you mean by disconnect? A disconnect of you can't sit with us. Is, is that the, the slogan, right? Of like, you can't sit with us. Like, mm -hmm. we'll come out, throw some turkeys to you or something, you know, maybe pass out some kicks and shit, but y'all can't really come into these circles. Man, I know what you're talking about. I just want to hit this real quick. Yeah, for sure. When women empowerment became like this huge thing, especially in our community, and I would go to certain events, and I noticed I would go to these events, and the people throwing it will have their own table. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can't sit with us. Right, right. <laughs> I came to meet you. I paid this money. I flew here so I can meet you. So I, I totally understand that inclusivity where it was lacking there, and people start to see that. So I would encourage people who are throwing these events, make sure you're going around, shaking hands, speaking to people one-on-one, -on -one, and feeling them out and seeing how you can truly help. Right. I see that missing a little bit. That's that's just the point. We could have a whole discussion. Look, that, I, I, like, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, because that is the other side of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yes, and I've been on I've been on both sides, mm -hmm. but I've been like, okay, okay. And, but, yeah, but, right, let's talk about the other side. Let's talk about the other side. Now we got coming up. I got my chair right. Here's a, here's so here's you really I, are of the black accent. Here's how I, here's how I think about it. I, there's like I'm like I'm a. <laughs> there is no right or wrong. Right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right. We I'm, didn't prompt. That. All of our rules. There's no right or wrong. It's just your I don't have a look. Um, it's, <laughs> um, I believe that um, if if there's a door closed, I closed it. If it does, if there's a door that closed, I closed it. So so I can. I don't have an idea. If there's a place I can't sit. <laughs> Unless I do, and if I do, then it, then it, there's a place I can't sit. But as long as I can open, look, I I've been in places where I've been like, okay, well, but then I find myself around people like, why y'all like, <laughs> why y'all like that? And have I go have you else. found yourself at the you can't sit with us table? I find myself that you can't sit with us, and then I'm, but I'm always like, okay, bring more people, and they're like, why you why are you bringing more people yeah. to my right. table? <laughs> that's how I, that's how I am. Okay. Um, but because but I, but I got to the table because I was like this you can't why I, why I can't sit here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I pulled up a chair. Mm -hmm. I pulled up a chair. I'm asking because I've sat at a lot of tables. We we've mentioned now yeah. a couple of times that we're we're both from organizations with fraternities sororities and like that in itself is a table. Like you can't sit at this table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's true. I I understand the people who are not in the organizations. We had an episode previous where we talked to. Uh, a retired police officer and that is in itself a different kind of table you know and we're 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 having that conversation of how do we uh kind of merge the tables with the police and the community but there's so many elite kind of tables that we end up sitting at you know um because you said you can sit there that's why you're there mm. I, 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 I used to perform because i'm like i'm gay <laughs> right and so I'll, I'll be in spaces where I'm like, y'all really want me to be here? Mm. Cause my, my poetry was rich. <laughs> rich. <laughs> That's what I'm right. using. He's in the, my poetry, poetry was rich. <laughs> and so I was, and so I would like take some moments to myself. I was like, cause I feel nervous. I'm like, well, Baron, they asked you to be here. <laughs> they asked you to be here. So you have so to. So you're talking so about you, so you have to. You, so you have to do what you, mm -hmm. what you came in. Mm. If not, then you, you're doing yourself and doing everyone else a disservice. So, thank you for bringing that up. Um, so even in the black excellence and inclusivity conversation, um, the reason we chose, I mean, we have a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons, um, as a black man that's also part of the LGBT community, what are some ways, if you just mentioned, not being included in part of the table? Um, and what needs to be included in that conversation. So like, um, you know, there's a lot of conversation out there about 
whether or not Black History Month also includes the history of LGBT Black community as well, right? Right. So, what's right. your perspective on that? Um. Yes. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Uh, great answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, it's well, it's as far as being part of the LGBTQIAUG <laughs> no, no, community, it's it's. I think there's a there's a special place where it should be acknowledged. I think it should be acknowledged from like from all over, but like mm-hmm. um, not just people of color, but like it should be acknowledged throughout history because because they're people of LGBT can have made strides and you can okay and then you can you name your few right the, the people through the Harlem Renaissance you name James Baldwin and like Jordan and her, like you name them but then there's people who still like making strides today who are yeah. affecting the world um, and they should be this as celebrated as um, as any other person so yeah I do think I think we're at a place now where the conversation is being brought in mm-hmm. Um, in the few generations after me, it may we may not need to have this conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I would really hope, man, that oh man, you know it's interesting because my mom and I talk about this a lot about how history works, and I, I was about to say I would hope that a time would come where we wouldn't need a Black History Month, um, but like it because it's it, the way we treat it seems like it has to be this forced reminder. And what I mean by that is, like, I would hope there would be a time where people would know, people would want to know. And then, because there's so many of us coming. Nussie and I have been friends for several years. <clears throat> we keep putting our age up there. I was like, such and such and such. We've been friends years. for several years. <laughs> Since high school. <laughs> and um, we, like, as adults, are just starting to have conversations like that. She's mm-hmm. Bengali Muslim, I'm black. Um, where I'm like, yo, send me some documentaries about your country. I want to know. You know, like, how many of us have friends and we go get drunk with them and everything, right? And um, Asian friends and all this other stuff. We're, I, I, to, to, to add to your point, we're at a place, I think, like a few generations, I don't know. We're at a place now where we get to, we we're actually owning our story and having the means to put it out. Right. right. There, I, I saw a documentary on Netflix about the godfather of... Um, Harlem. Of Harlem, right? Very good. Mm-hmm. The Godfather of Harlem was like, oh, really? He did all that? Mm-hmm. Right. But you're right in what you're saying. I don't go to my friends of other backgrounds and say, send me some documentaries or let me learn about your history. I'm just hanging out. Mm-hmm. So that is... That's, that's most of us. We we just reposted the Rihanna. Um, she had the oh, Image Awards. Nice. Yeah. And, um, tell them to pull up. Tell them, tell them pull up. You know, <laughs> she did. Tell I, you know, I, I, I don't critique our folks, but I'd say that in person, I don't critique black people out in public. You know, I'll talk about us uh, indoors because it's enough. It's, a, it's, it's just enough. <laughs> I don't need to get on here on our radio show. Like people got it covered, um, and I, I feel a way about a lot of celebrities because of the things they don't say. I don't think such as I'm not gonna name any how I feel, but like, I don't think everybody should be charged to doing something, but like, that was a minute of Rihanna's life that impacted gajillions of people, you know? She didn't have to jump out the window, she didn't have to make, she didn't have to make death threats, she didn't have to say anything crazy. Tell your friends to pull up. Yeah. It's a term that everybody understands from our age and under, um, and I think that was great. Speaking of Rihanna, um, a successful- Excellence. Excellence, yes. Excellence. Um, this question is for you, Laquana. So speaking of that, <laughs> so recently in the media, we've there's been a lot of attention towards, you know, obviously Kobe Bryant situation, and some of the comments that Gail King has made in reference to him, right, and which has then created a further backlash. Do you know anything about this or? A bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, um, so I guess, I don't know if you know the exact things Gail <laughs> King said. Things. Uh, she was essentially, she... She was probing in the interview. Probing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it caused a lot of backlash of bringing up the, the, the rape case with, with Kobe. And there's different levels, I guess, mm-hmm. of uh, what the backlash was. Some of it was just like, why are you talking about it, period. And then the other was how she conducted it. 
<laughs> how she <laughs> how she conducted the the actual conversation with Lisa Leslie, uh, where she's kind of insinuated. That, you know, she asked her a question, Lisa answered it, and she was like, "Oh, you would say that because y'all are friends." You know, <laughs> right? That, like that was um, to me that was the biggest thing. If you want to be like you're a journalist, that's fine. You got to bring stuff up, mm-hmm. but it's a matter of how. So I think the underlying. Um One of the underlying factors in the situation is that there's this myth that when black women reach a certain level of success, that um, they may automatically, they have a tendency of looking down on black men or whatever the case is. Um, What's your perspective on that whole situation, if you know about it or just in general? I don't think that situation was about... um, a black woman reaching a certain level and looking down. Maybe it was, but like the woman in the interview said to Gail, you had all this time to ask these questions and let him rest in peace. And I would, I would never even speak on that. But as far as what I think about when black women reach a certain level of success, they look down on black men. Not so much. I think we're looking for more black men more than anything, whether that's to date them, whether that's to do business with them, whether that's to pull them up, at least I am, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of other men who need black men to get to a certain level to help them. So as a black woman in my own right who is successful, I'm personally not looking down if I'm thinking about other people because my background is in corporate, and that's where you see a lot of successful black women in that realm, and then kind of that stereotypical um, wording is around that when you talk about like corporate America yeah. women reaching a certain stance and then they looking down on people I don't see it too much to be honest I think more than anything we need black men mm. and I want to see more black men yeah purr, purr, purr. <laughs> <laughs> no, doing man. great things you, doing man. great things uh, we I'm a black man and and another reason why we started this Iron Perspective is because I was like, Yo, how are we ever going to get black men and black women to talk? And as I started focusing on that for us, mm-hmm. I started thinking about that for everybody. You know, how are we going to get Bengali men and women to talk? How are we going to get Jewish men and women to talk? Because a lot of these issues we're talking about need to be fixed at home. You know, there's a lot of things happening within our family that, you know, so this was always about conversations within, within. I think that's true, too. Understanding the black man is another thing. Yeah. That if... Look, this is going to be a whole other thing. <laughs> I think if we, if, we, if we take time as successful people, period, to understand the black man and to understand that, yeah, he may look a certain way on the exterior, but that could have been a product of his environment. Mm-hmm. Right? That doesn't mean he doesn't need to hear from you. That doesn't right. mean you need to clench your purse because you're a little nervous. Right. So taking that time to understand the black man... And to not be so judgmental will really, really help. Yeah. Um, so and yeah. again, I, I really do want to re- reiterate, I love, we didn't prompt you for this, and that is your perspective. You could have said something else, and we would have been cool with it. But I, I know black men who feel that way. We did a, an event, Love and Perspective, last year. We had this very poignant moment where there was a gentleman in there talking about the female friends that he had, and they were lawyers, and... They were doing well, and they were at a place where they didn't want to date black men anymore for whatever their personal reasons were. You know? That was his perspective. Anyway. That was his perspective. Right, right. And, and this is how conversation, this is why we do perspective, because mm-hmm. he had everybody in the room when he was talking about his thing. And as soon as he said, you know, and then black women do da 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 he said that one thing, and the whole room was just like, oh! Mm-hmm. All the women's hands went up. Mm-hmm. All the men was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> And you were kept, doing great. You were doing great. He kept going. So, but what I mean is that he was focused on perspective and then his personal view uh-huh. jumped into it and then he made it a bigger thing. And I think we don't get to And he generalized he everybody. Because yeah. he knew three successful black women. And then oh, it's like, boy. that's how everybody. it's successful. Right. And, and, and do, we, but do we allow him to have that perspective or do we, edu- or do we educate him? Oh, no, nah, he got right. educated at that moment. You know, he may got told off. <laughs> it wasn't told off, but the whole room had to stop because if we kept it going, that's mm-hmm. when it turns into a regular conversation. Yeah. He and wasn't one, one change of the it. you know points of Iron Perspective is that first of all, we don't generalize in any way. So whether or not you're speaking on behalf of yourself or like we, 
even with like you can't just blame all white people when you come to an event even if that's how you feel right you can speak about it in a way where it's still productive where people are still willing to listen so that's one of our it cuts yeah. all of the uh talk down because somebody can just look at it and say oh this is this man's perspective this is this person's perspective mm -hmm. i don't have to think like man if i'm talking to a white person he says black guys da -da 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 -da, i can be like hey this is how mm -hmm. it takes away the the sting of me having to embody or a black or the responsibility woman of, who's been yeah. hurt and trashed by black men all her life i've never done it to a black woman and i have to sit there and not embody it but i can see this is her perspective this mm -hmm. is and it changes the tone of the conversation so we definitely want to hear more of that in that aspect of just successful black women of what they actually feel of successful black men what they're looking for of black men in the lgbtq community we had a great event last year with the community where it was all this is from my perspective it was all uh, people of color on the lgbtq panel and that was my first time hearing that many different people of color we had every all the letters represented <laughs> so it wasn't like it was just this whole game you know it was that every, panel <laughs> it, it was the actual letter alphabet panel we're gonna re-up that, that this year it was okay. great um but it it was wonderful to see um how it came from individually nobody was representing the whole flag nobody was representing the whole movie they was like yo this is my experience as a black queer as a black bisexual as a brown whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's why we do this. We really appreciate hearing from you today, um, and and that's why we create this platform. That's why yeah. we create this. Space. I see some thoughts in your head, Barry. What's coming? Yeah, up? yeah. That's what we. So that's what we turn it up for. Yeah. Y'all yeah. staring up at me. Yeah. No. Um. I, you. Um. As a. Black, gay man of color. Mm. Uh, layers. La there's, there's, yeah, it's layers. Cause one, as a, as a, as a, as, and I've been doing some, some work or some, 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 some internal work around, okay. around what it, what it feels like to own your own body, mm -hmm. and how it's been the black man for, I mean black women too, right? For a while, had no ownership. Of what your of 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 your own body, yeah. and then um, me now looking to see what does that actually mean for me? Yeah. How do I how do I move in the way? Cause cause I look I'm, I'm from North New Jersey. I had to move a certain way in North New the Jersey. Bricks R from yeah. <laughs> so you, you gonna fuck with me? You ain't gonna fuck with me. <laughs> 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 how I wanted to move or is that me being or is that with me like being a um, um, victim of my surroundings mm. right now, victim now, of surroundings. now do I have now that, now that I'm, I'm growing I'm like I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old man right now now really but um, what do I how do I how do I how do you own it how do I own it and that's a I mean I don't know if I have the right answer to it mm. but I'm in practice that's a great thing when you said of the body. I've talked to a lot of men and women, especially women, about uh, the uh, how men can have sex with as many, you know, we're more promiscuous, so however you want to put it. And I was saying, like, my experience with men, period, but especially black men, is, like, we don't, we're not grown, we're not raised to, like, have super value on ourselves, on our parts. You know, as a, as a woman, as I've experienced women, it's like, if you're raised in some kind of way, Hey, you know, you take your time, you wait, blah, 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 blah. Like, for us, it's take your time, but it's not like, hey, this is sacred. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is the creator of life. You yeah. can't just give yeah. this to anybody. You can't just you get can't, this anywhere. Yeah. You, can't, you can't ignore the historic foundation. Like, if you're, if you're an African American, you can't, you can't ignore that for, for hundreds and hundreds of years, yeah, it wasn't it. yours. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Even for women, right? Your babies weren't yours. Right. Right. Yeah. And so now, we, now we're at a place where we, I think we're rediscovering it. I'm rediscovering. So I'm, not, you know, I'm part of the world right now. Mm -hmm. So what is it now? Mm -hmm. What is your own body? Right. How do you? And then how do I communicate with you? So I think if, mm -hmm. if you want to understand the man, he has to understand, sort of like do some work mm -hmm. internally mm -hmm. before you can try to understand what the I black see. man is. At the beginning then, of the year, we started the identity and belonging conversation, 
And so as you're speaking about this, that's what's coming up for me is what is belonging when you haven't had access to your own body and your own that's self for so long. Yeah. Your own self, your own language, your mm-hmm. own history. And I think that's where talk about the inclusive the inclusivity part, right? Yeah. When you start to understand that you are just body and like mind and spirit and then everyone else is just body, mind and spirit, then you can see that then you can see the um, similarities, yeah. the oneness, rather mm-hmm. than, oh, okay, you're a woman, you're, you know, you're from Brooklyn, yeah. I'm from Brooklyn, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? Yeah. right. That's, right. Right. That's, That's what the song right. has to do. <laughs> right? Hey, you, you, begin to, you begin to look through it. And so that's, I mean, that's how, how I live now. I, view, yeah. I, can, I can still have my, I can still play in my own separateness. Right, my own whatever, blah 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 mm-hmm. blah, but still can be, still exists as part of like, okay, that's part of me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Juana, what about you? What does identity and belonging look like for you? So hearing you speak, it just reminded me of growing up in Brooklyn, and my identity being much what my mom wanted it to be, mm-hmm. right? So do well in school, get the grades, come in before sundown. You know, all these things, and to this day, I'm still battling with being perfect when that does not exist, right? Because I'm hearing the voice, love my mom to death. I should have said she was one of the people that I look up to for for, for excellence, but, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So when I think about identity, that was my identity for so long. So I had to do some work, and I had to start saying, okay, what is it that you want for yourself? Mm-hmm. How are you going to get there? What, who do you want to be now? Because sometimes we forget to live now. And when I forget to live now, I sometimes buy myself roses so I can smell them mm-hmm. and live in the moment, mm-hmm. right? Sure. So who do you want to be now? And then let's talk about your future self to think that person. But who do you want to be? Mm-hmm. Not what everybody else wants for you. Mm-hmm. Because for so long, it was like you can't be a failure. You can't mess up. So and that's a real okay. and that's a real tough question to ask yourself um, and and find an answer real quick. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, that's not a real quick answer. It's, it's work and it's yeah. still work. It's I, still work. I was gonna say I want to highlight what we do. All these different conversations that we've had, we've had all different cultures. Just in eight episodes, we've had then they half the world sitting here <laughs> <laughs> representing all. And the thing I find so intriguing, talking to Nussie, learning more about Southeast Asian culture, Mm -hmm. is that a lot of us grew up that way. Mm -hmm. You know, she'll talk about her parents, how they weren't, you know, they were strict. They weren't the strictest, but like, uh, we'll talk to Pakistani uh, children or the Caribbeans. We've been doing a lot of Caribbean perspective. And everybody's like, yo, my mom was in. And I don't think that we all understand (laughs) that a lot of us grew up that way. No. We're all, there's a lot of similarities yes. that we don't realize. Like, yeah. There's all these memes out there like, oh, Caribbean parents say this. I'm like, wait, that's the same thing at my house. Right, right. We also, we also <laughs> collect plastic bags. Right. We also do a lot of... Yeah. That's why you got to send the documentaries so that we all can learn about each other. Yeah, right, yeah. And then I think that's a part of I Am Perspective and why we even started this platform, right? Um, Jarrell being a black man and me being a Muslim woman is that we realize that um, what would it take for people of different backgrounds to want to listen to people and hear about their story? A lot of people, you know, if they don't have a vested interest, then they're kind of checked out. They're like, oh, that's not my problem. Mm-hmm. And so really what we're looking to do is create those spaces because we do think, um, like, I totally agree with Rihanna's message. That's why I'm out here doing this work. Um, this was the I'm not Haitian. We were doing the Haitian perspective. I don't, you know, I'm just... You know, we're learning as we go. We don't have all the answers as we're hosting all these shows. Um, yeah, that was the heart of it. We were talking about Black Lives Matter, and we like we see all these black people marching. I know they got friends. Right. You're telling mm-hmm. me that you, you as an Asian person or whoever, you see your homie down at the march because they're invested in something, and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, man, go ahead, Tyrone, take care of that. <laughs> see you at the pub later. <laughs> And all, the bad rap right yeah, now. But like all across the board and I, I hear what Rihanna is saying you got gay friends you have women who are talking about this is my experience I, I see that as well and our coach I got so mad about it because I feel like personally I, and I could be wrong but I feel like black people have to do shit first a lot like especially here we got to be the ones to trend this and be the first ones 
So I would, I, we're being ousted, especially black men, because we're the culture. Mm -hmm. So the memes and everything that's coming from us. So if we have an internal beef, it's, it looks like our shit is what the problem is. Uh, or are they beefing? But I'm like, everybody's beefing. Everybody in everybody's culture. They don't, they're not high-fiving in Saudi Arabia. There's all types of issues. <laughs> happening. <laughs> yeah, there's no perfection. It's just our shit is highlighted, and it makes it feel like um, nobody else is going through this. Like everybody else, Colombian people are totally happy in their marriages and, and and interactions and so forth. Or we mentioned recently black on black crime, you know, like that's a thing as if yeah. crime doesn't happen wherever people are at, you know. And we could have talked about that 